Los Angeles suffers the worst blanket of smog in its history. The giant California city is shrouded by the ugly mist, dangerous to health and traffic. California, 1943. It was a growing problem and still a mystery. Everyone knew something had to be done, and quickly. The haze called smog was getting worse. Burning eyes, searing throats, literally choking the life out of Californians. But what was smog? What were the health effects? And how much was too much? Where did it come from, and how do you control it? The best scientists at Caltech, the University of California, and Stanford were put to work. What they discovered set the stage for pioneering air pollution work over the next five decades, making California a world leader in the fight against smog. Scientists simulated the atmosphere in chambers until the answers came. They discovered that smog was mainly ozone gas and very small particulate matter. It came from the burning of fuels and the emission of hydrocarbon vapors, cooked under stable air in warm sunlight. It was the recipe for a toxic soup. I've been a resident of this city for 12 years. And brother, I can't take it anymore. In those early years, few understood that smog could cause permanent lung damage. Viewers suspected that it came from thousands of different air pollution sources. No one imagined that it would take the next 50 years of science and politics to make substantial progress controlling smog. It would take concerned citizens working with local and state government to pass laws that protect the public from air pollution. And it would take academia and industry working together to create innovative engineering solutions to reduce air pollution emissions. In the early years, smoke from factories was wrongly perceived as the main ingredient of smog. The city of Los Angeles was first to jump into the fight during World War II years, adopting smoke regulations. They had little effect on the smog. At the same time, officials realized that it would take more than one city standing alone to reduce smog throughout a vast air basin. They discovered that the chemistry of air pollution is complex and that it knows no geographic boundaries. Smog-forming emissions from one county frequently find their way into a neighboring downwind county. The public demanded that more be done. The California legislature passed a law in 1947 allowing counties to regulate local sources of air pollution. That year, the Los Angeles Air Pollution Control District was formed, followed later by the Bay Area Air Pollution Control District and other Southern California counties. As mayor of Los Angeles, I am deeply concerned over the present smog condition. This is the time to cut out all red tape. I've ordered the police department to cooperate with the County Air Pollution Control Board in every manner. The air districts started their cleanup with large industrial sources of air pollution emissions, burning landfills, refineries, power plants, and factories. Later regulations control emissions from thousands of smaller industrial sources, paint shops, plating operations, gasoline stations, boilers, and incinerators. Emissions from these sources, taken together, added up to a major portion of the smog problem. Emission controls had to be fairly applied to all kinds of air pollution sources and be cost effective. As research progressed and California grew, a major culprit came into clearer focus. The automobile. Just about everyone owned a car and no one wanted it to be true, but cars and trucks were to blame for much of the smog. Now everyone would make a more personal sacrifice for clean air. The legislature mandated motor vehicle emission standards for the first time, putting
putting a limit on smog-forming gases that pass out the tailpipe. A record was set today for the longest duration of hazardous air in the history of Los Angeles, and the smog conditions will be just as bad tomorrow. Everyone, no matter how physically fit, is being warned to stay inside and take it easy whenever possible. Local air pollution districts were not enough. A coordinated statewide effort to fight air pollution was needed. In 1959, the legislature passed laws making California the first state to establish air quality standards based on the public health effects of smog. This was a crucial first step, figuring out how much air pollution is too much. To implement the statewide fight, the legislature created the Air Resources Board, or ARB, in 1967. The board was given the job of controlling air pollution from cars, trucks, and other mobile sources of air pollution. ARB was also directed to coordinate the efforts of the local air quality districts. ARB set to work, requiring auto manufacturers to build cleaner running vehicles, less hydrocarbons, less oxides of nitrogen, and less carbon monoxide. Industry met the challenge. First, cars had to have positive crankcase ventilation valves. Later, every car had to have a catalytic converter. Vapor recovery nozzles became mandatory at gas stations. Leaded gasoline was phased out. Low sulfur fuel oil and diesel fuel were phased in. Cars ran ever cleaner through the 1970s. But even as cars and industry polluted less, smog levels declined only slightly. Between 1950 and 1980, 13 million more people called California home. And most of them drove cars or trucks. They drove more and they drove further. The downtown Los Angeles skyline was shrouded in smog again today. Commuters driving into the city saw it slowly emerge from a dense gray haze. Millions of people are coughing and wheezing their way through the worst October smog attack in almost a decade. All through the morning, the eyes had been riveted on the instruments. AQMD officials waiting to see if the smog levels would rise high enough to trigger still another second stage alert. Finally, the answer came. This is the South Coast Air Quality Management District. A second stage episode health advisory for oxidant has been attained. The maximum hourly average contaminant concentration is 0.39 parts per million in the East San Gabriel Valley area number 9. Air quality planners and government agencies had no choice. They would have to design tougher rules to keep up with explosive population growth and more air pollution. The effort involved in drawing up the smog rules in the first place has been enormous. It's a task that has taken several years. And now it's obvious that the job of working to comply with those rules will be equally as large. As before, California led the nation and the world, developing new strategies to reduce smog levels. To protect public health, it was the only choice we had. Ah, it's good to get out in the open air. And I wish it wasn't so smoggy. Looks to me like the air is so messed up, we won't even be able to breathe someday. Excuse me, I didn't catch that. During the 80s and 90s, California cars became the world's cleanest running cars. Computers controlled the engines, fuel, and exhaust systems. Smog check made sure the equipment worked. California skies began to clear. The choking, burning haze that once blighted Los Angeles began to thin. Despite millions more people, cars, trucks, and more industry, California air quality was getting better. In the 90s, cleaner burning gasoline was introduced. It was the air quality equivalent of eliminating the pollution from 3.5 million cars. Air quality got even better. L.A. smog alerts went from 148 in 1970 to only one in 1997. Smog alerts in the San Francisco Bay Area disappeared. The public had demanded that something be done about smog. It was clear the system was working. 
state and local government working with academia and industry, making measurable progress in the fight to protect public health. Much has been accomplished over 50 years, protecting public health while allowing for economic growth. The air is cleaner, but not clean enough. Unhealthy levels of air pollution, violating state and federal standards, are still with us. It is clear that transportation must pollute less. With more people driving, with even more cars, more trucks, reaching clean air goals will require even more innovative solutions. 100 years after the golden age of the internal combustion car comes the electric vehicle. In the future, turn of the 21st century EV cars may look as quaint as the first cars of the 20th century. The California Air Resources Board is working with auto and battery manufacturers to chart the future of personal transportation. Other areas show promise. Fuel cells, cleaner running trucks, and consumer products. But California will need more than electric vehicles and technology to clear California skies. Smart consumer choices such as carpooling and alternative transportation will matter more than ever. Public support for air quality programs will be crucial for success. Once again, California can take a pioneering lead, watched around the world in the fight against air pollution. Clean air. It's up to us.